right, man. Here we go. This is uh, Brian James. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? All right, man. So uh, you want me to be here? You want me to be here? Yeah, you right here. Okay, right here is cool, man. All right, man. So this is the first. This is uh, Beyond the Gamer um, new interview series. My man, I felt he would be perfect to do this. I'm gonna be watching this one. Okay. Um, I felt he would be perfect, the perfect person to do this because. I've been knowing this brother for a long time, about 20 years. About 20. So yeah, this is this is Beyond the Gamer, um, where I'm gonna be doing interviews with select gamers from different parts of the country at some point, uh, but we're gonna be getting into talking about things beyond just playing video games. So, all right, brother. So you're Brian James. Yes, sir. How do people know you today? What's your name? Uh, Today, man, I just I just go by Adonis, man. Okay, Adonis. Um, call, they can call me Ado for short. Okay. Um, formerly, when I when I first first started mm-hmm. uh, Tekken Zaibatsu back in the day, okay, people a lot of people might not remember this, but my tag was Eddie Killer. Eddie Killer. Eddie Killer. Was this? I mean, for what reason would you be Eddie Killer? I have no no clue. No man. clue. I was a kid. So that was shit that was given to you. Like it was it was like, cause you you go on Zaibatsu, you create a name, uh-huh. and the internet was so slow. Yeah, I, I kept coming up with names. But it the, it kept timing out. Uh huh. So uh, I wanted I wanted to be master of Ling. Okay. Okay. All right. So I was about seventeen, and uh, that didn't work. Okay. And uh, I was like, man, I gotta I gotta make something. So I felt like Eddie players were masters. They were okay. bums. Okay. So that was that was my way of saying like a bum killer. Well, that, okay. So because I mean, initially that's what I would have thought because yeah. I know that Eddie was kind of yeah. like. You hit the buttons with him and shit, so yeah, you were that person. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's dope. Yeah. So Eddie Killer, all right, yeah. where did you, what, what name, without without going into like a deep story, what name came after Eddie Killer? After Eddie Killer, about four or five months, <laughs> I made the name Ali Vegas. That's, I'll take, that's, I'll take that's, it like Boston. That's, yeah. that's the one, that's probably the yeah. most popular for people that knew you yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Give, give me a story on that. So Ali Vegas, he was, a, uh, he was an up-and-coming rapper from Queens, okay. New York. And the reason I picked that name is because when he came out in '99 mm-hmm. uh, on the on the Into Deep soundtrack, the Specialist. Gotcha. And I saw this nigga's picture yeah. in a magazine. Okay. And I thought it was me. Damn. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, like I, I like I looked at it and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm gonna have to throw a photo yeah, up there in this yeah, part so I can yeah, get a it, comparison. Yeah, it's, it's 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 an old picture. Okay. And, uh, I was like, damn, that nigga look just like me. Okay. And um, that's how it came about. That's what's we, up. We, 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 he was just like my doppelganger. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so for was, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's what everybody, the, a lot of New York cats knew him. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I was, people in, in New York remember me a lot. That's dope. That. Yeah, yeah. All right, so man, we're going to start you from the top. Where are you from, brother, exactly? So I, I'm from Detroit, man. Okay. I'm from the west side. West side. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, Smith Holmes, Brightmore. Okay. All right. Uh, BMO. Yep. All lived, right. Lived over there. My family lived over there since the '60s. Okay. Um, I'm the third generation born in Detroit. Okay. You ain't gonna find too many of us. Okay. In my age, yeah. age range. Yeah. And my my grandmother, yeah. grandfather was mm-hmm. born here. Uh, mother was born here. That's and true. Then I, and then I was born. Here. That's that's true. So, I can attest to that. Yeah. A lot of people are uh, they migrated. Yeah. Either at the the grandmother level or the great, they yeah. migrated from down south or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That's so, dope. So my grandparents are born here. Uh, we've been living in Detroit for about a hundred years. Okay, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. That's awesome, man. Yep. Um, I mean, so how was it growing up for you personally, bro? Like, I mean, just tell me what what life was like for you growing up in Detroit as best you can remember. From yeah. You. So my earliest memories come from like 1985. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um. I'm one of them kids with a with an overly developed brain. Gotcha, man. So I, my first memories, shit, actually, before that, I remember being one. Damn, you feel me? That's deep. So um, when I was young, mm-hmm. you know, like 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 a lot of people, you know, my parents they they didn't marry. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it was a it was a it was a lot going on back then. You know, in the '80s, Reagan was right, was, right. was doing a lot yeah, of stuff for sure. You know, my dad just got out the military. Yep. Um, both my parents they met in college. You know, and um, Detroit started getting wild. Okay. Like right when I was, when I was like, yeah. When my when my conscience was For really sure. there. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 86, 87. Yeah. And some of the stuff I saw, man, it was it was wild. Wow. But it, but it was normal. For sure. 
You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Crack houses here. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, uh, niggas on the street yep. Yep. selling dope. Mm-hmm. Doing, you know, so you've seen a lot of that growing up, and yeah, you remember man. that. Yeah, I remember, That's man. Crazy, I, man. I remember we lived on Appleline in Schoolcraft, and neighborhood over there was so wild, man. Right off of Myers, mm. not Apple, not Appleline in uh, school. yeah, Appleline Schoolcraft. Yep. Okay, and uh, it was wild, man. We okay. used to leave our house, go to the to the to the grocery store mm-hmm. or the or the gas station, mm-hmm. or to the liquor store. Mm-hmm. Ten minutes. Four dope fiends in your house. Damn, that's crazy. Cleans you out. Yo, that's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? They they cleaned out our whole Christmas one year. That's wild, man. Yeah. That's that's so, fucked up, man. Yeah, it is. It really so, is. But uh I I um I seen a lot. Yeah. You know, family, mm-hmm. friends, people yep. around me. Mm-hmm. And uh it 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 you know, it it altered my character. Okay. From being from one way to another way. Yeah, but gotcha. We, we can get more into that. For sure, a little for bit sure. Later. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right, man. So um, what about school, man? Because, I mean, obviously, growing up, having situations where, you know, you 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 are a part of your environment. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got dope fiends and, and crack houses and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. What was school like, man? Was you able to finish? Uh, school for me, man, you know, my, my, my grandfather, he was big on education. Okay. Um, he made sure that all his kids and his grandkids could read and write Word. at young ages. Mm. So he um, he introduced me to math when I was a when I was a, a tyke. Okay, you know what I mean. That's so what's up. doing math with him and you know learning how to sign my name in cursive before I could start you know before I started school For and sure. stuff like that. I always had an advantage. Okay, you know what I mean yeah. because at home with me. At least for my grandparents, mm-hmm. you know, they my my grandfather was always active in okay. what I was doing in school, um, so I was always like a step. I was I was always a grade or two ahead in, gotcha. in, a, in a lot of in a lot of different aspects. Yep. Um, some people would go as far as calling me a genius. I got you. You bro. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the schools that I went to, you know, really weren't ready for somebody like me i understand so you know you don't you don't get double promoted right right you know so yep. that's that's where a lot of my my problems in school came from you feel me because mm-hmm. you know you finish your work in five minutes yep and the class is hour long right you exactly be that, you being that bitch wilding out yeah eventually I see. you know what i mean i see um so in in school you know like by the time I got to middle school, bro, mm-hmm. I was a mess. I got you, man. You feel me? Like, yeah. I had everything upstairs. Yeah, for sure. But it was just stuff at home wasn't right. Right. So going back to the things you were seeing and experiencing, yeah, Christmas yeah. being fucked up. And yeah, yeah. I got you, bro. Yeah, I got like, you. Like, uh, yeah. It was. It was. Uh, I used to. I used to. I, I, I might. I might have had ADHD or something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I used to be all over the place, and um, I just had like. I guess I just had a, a problem paying attention. You feel me? Like my shit used to just be be everywhere. Yep. And um, I used to talk in class, gotcha. fuck around. And to be honest, once I got older, because when I was younger, it was a totally different story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Growing up in the projects, you know what I'm saying? Like as far as being like a product in your environment, like mm-hmm. that shit is real. I got you. You feel me? Like I got you. Like a lot of people don't know. A lot of people. A lot of people from Detroit. They're from the hood, right? Or from the bad parts, right? But they're not from the projects, right? Right? Yeah, that's a, that's me? a whole different. Yeah, being yeah. from the projects is different than being yeah. from the hood. Yeah, man. You know, it, like my family, we lived in the projects since let's say 1965, mm-hmm. right? So I'm the second generation being raised in the projects, right? You feel me? Yeah. So when people live in the projects, for the most part, they don't leave. I see. You see what I'm saying? I got you. So. Their clans, mm-hmm. my family, that family, this family, that family, you know, and those those clans end up growing up with each other, right. developing with each other, and they influence each other. I gotcha. So, for example, my fam my family are the Jameses. People in the Smith homes know my family to this day. You got other families, the the Simpsons. You got the the Merryweathers. You got um, uh, the Perkins. You got you feel me. Each generation has kids the same age, and they all grew up with each other. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, it's like a fucking anime. It's like it's like Naruto yeah. or something. Right, you know I mean? right. So you got the the, the kids born in the sixties. Mm-hmm. You got the ones born in the seventies. Mm-hmm. You got the ones born in the eighties, and so on. Mm-hmm. So all the bad shit from each family, you all 
bring it with you everywhere you go. I got you. And the kids end up developing. It's not that they're not smart. They're right. very fucking intelligent. Right, right. But it's like, it's adult mm. behavior. I understand. So At you got to understand. Age, so I learned how to shoot dice. I see. When I was seven. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We was we was cussing, saying motherfucking nigga, yep. bitch ass yep. nigga. Mm-hmm. We were seven years old. I see. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. a lot of bad shit that came with that. Yep. And, you know, when I was in when I was in school, um, me and my me and my niggas when we were in second grade, we had a gang back then. I see. You know what I'm saying? We I had a, we, we were we were banging back then. Okay, that brings me to my next thing, and I w- I wanted to know like socially. I mean, how were you in school? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was out. I'm I'm the same as I am now, man. I was like smart mm-hmm. kid, all A's. Yep, yep, yep. When the teacher not looking, I'm great. Mm-hmm. You know, ones in citizenship. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I stepped outside that fucking classroom, bro, I fucking went off, bro. Mm, I see. Fights, beating niggas' ass. I see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like. Yeah. What, once, once the camera was on, and, right. it was, and it was time for me to to put on that performance. Right. In the classroom. I got you. I'm teacher's pet. Let me ask you this: Do you feel like you learned that type of um, behavior to like camouflage? Did you you feel like you learned that from the projects? I feel like I did, bro. Okay. Yeah, I I, I call it wearing a mask. I got you. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like 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 it can be good and it can be bad. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like like who who is who is my true identity? You know what I'm saying? Because I have to I have to put some people call it hats. You have to put on different hats. I see. In my say in my case I say wearing a mask because I feel like every aspect is me. You feel me? It's I like do. it's like but it's like Mega Man or some shit. How Mega mm-hmm. Man he choose he got his regular buster, mm-hmm. but then he take everybody else shit. I yep. don't think I took anybody's per se, but mm-hmm. I just had to learn to be certain ways I in see. certain places. I you know, you. so in the class I was a bookworm. Mm. As soon as we step outside the class, I'm beating niggas to death. Mm. You feel me? I get when I'm it. walking around in in the in the hood, I I, I got to be tough, right? Right. Because that's who I got to be, right? You know. But when I'm in class, I do this, I do mm-hmm. that. So that's just that's just how I learned to be. I understand. Even back then, you yeah. feel me? Yeah. And um. And, and, and socially, as far as school, man, I was always popular. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I was popular because, especially in my old neighborhood in, in, in Brightmoor, mm-hmm. you got different families. Gotcha. So people see my last name, mm-hmm. they know who I am. Mm-hmm. They know who I am, they okay. know who my brother is, they know I who see. my uncles are, they know who my mama is. I gotcha. They know who my grandparents are, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have to do nothing. I see. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as I go to class, if I have a new teacher, they, they, they was teaching my, my mom and my uncles. So my reputation came with my family. So, and then having an older brother, my mm-hmm. brother is six years older than me. Okay. He pretty much set the tone for like, uh, my bro- you know, my brother is, he, he, he <laughs> my brother is, he's, he's the opposite of me. I'm more you. low key. Uh-huh. I don't really try to yeah. be outgoing, yeah. but my brother is just, He's just socially mm-hmm. just that nigga every, everywhere he go. Every neighborhood we lived in, mm-hmm. he just a man every single place. I got you. And if I'm his brother, right, that's it. That's yeah. all. That's yeah. all I ever needed. That's it. Right. You, you okay. feel me? I got you. Um, and then when I went when I went to other schools, like I went to school like on Six Mile when mm-hmm. I was older. Yeah. Um, even there, it was a, for for me. It was a it was it was different because I'm a, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to move on past this, but no, it was it was, cool. it was different because. When I was growing up in Brightmore, mm-hmm. the kids were horrible. I went to Harding. Okay. On Burt Road in uh, Linda. Okay. The kids were bad as fuck. Mm-hmm. Young ages. Yep. Everybody flunked two and three times. It was mm-hmm. really wild. I see. If I'm in the second grade or third grade, the niggas in, in my class are almost twelve years old. I see. I you got feel you. me? Like I it, was, it was. It was a different, mm-hmm. totally different construct. I understand. When I when I moved to Six Mile. Yep. The niggas on Six Mile and Seven Mile were nothing like that. I see. You feel me? Like yeah. it was, it was, yeah. it was different. So mm-hmm. when I came, I went to, I went to Emerson on uh, Curtis and uh, um, Huntington. Mm-hmm. When I came over there, I came over there on some big dog jail right. shit. Right. Because that's how you had to be. Yeah. Use, over the hard. Use around dudes as yeah. loader and shit. Yeah. So, yeah. I so I, that's how I came over there. Like nigga, I know I'm gonna have to fuck somebody up today. Because mm-hmm. this is, this is how it is at my school. I got you. So I came over there on that tip. Right. And it was only one dude. I think his name was Martez or something. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name. Yeah. And he came at me on some tough guy shit. We went in the bathroom. I, I tossed this nigga around. 
bro. I tossed this nigga around the whole nigga. Yeah. He came out and gave me that. Right. Yeah, we good. I was good. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was. You feel me? That was yeah. That was some jailhouse type shit. Everybody else. Uh huh. They were cool, bro. Yeah. I never seen nothing like when you. you, uh, Since we're on the subject of kind of what started you from playing games in Street Fighter. Mm Um, at what point did you see potential in yourself from any games that mm-hmm. you decided, man, you know, I can actually compete? Take, take me to that point. It was the, it was very early for me, bro. Okay. It was the Nintendo World Championships. Word. It was, uh, I believe that was either 1989 or 1990. Dope. Uh, the old heads will know. I remember seeing it on the news. And they had the Nintendo World Championship, Detroit's version. They had it down at the fucking Kobo. Damn. Yep. And I saw it on TV, bro. My eyes just lit up. You know, I was like, damn. Like, they actually have competitive tournaments for gaming. Yeah. It blew me away, bro. Yeah. It blew me away. And I and when I saw it, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Uh. It was just like that. Yeah. And I believe, um, what's my guy's name? Um, um Savage um, from Wonder Years. Mm-hmm. He came out. It came out that movie, The Wizard, mm. um, with him going to yep. California yep. with his little brother. It was mm-hmm. around that same time span. Yep, yep. And that anywhere between six and seven, bro. Okay. You know, like I knew um, when I finally got good enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took some lumps, man. I got you, man. Uh, yeah. Learning, learning how to play <laughs> on that joystick, man. Yeah, man. It was a, it was a beast. Right, because I mean, you transition and you talking about from. Uh, a boxy Nintendo controller with two buttons to yeah. you know, actually controlling your wrist yeah, and man. flatly pushing buttons. Yeah, man. I didn't I didn't have the the hand and eye coordination. I even, got you. even when they when the old heads used to tell us how yeah. to do the moves. Yep, yep. show. Sure. They's like, oh, you gotta do is roll yep, the joystick yep, yep. and hit the button. Yeah. And I didn't have the timing. Yeah, exactly. So I used to kind of just mash right, right, it. right. Yeah, that's what mashing comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I knew how to do it. Yep. Um, that happened all the way until. Because I started at 8. Gotcha. So probably when I was about 10, bro. Gotcha. By the time I hit 10, okay. I remember I was playing hyper fighting yep. at Dale's, uh, playing against Dawson. i never forget. I was on the Dawson stage. Yeah. And something told me. I was like, just do the move. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I put it in. I did a, I did a, a dragon punch. Uh-huh. Bop, bop. Show you can. It came out. And I was like, I was like, damn, that was easy. All yeah. I had to do was just right. do the exact motion. And I did it again. Show yeah. you. And I start doing it across the screen. Show you. Show you. I was like. I was like Eureka, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like just one day, it just, yeah. it just, it just came yeah. to me. And after that, I was busting ass. Right. Man. That's all I needed. Yep. Because you know, you have to imagine mm-hmm. when somebody jumping in on you, especially on Street Fighter Two. Yeah. Yep. And you got to do the v- mm-hmm. the DP, and you're fucking around and getting fireball yep. by mistake, and they kicking yep. you in the face and dizzying you. Mm-hmm. So once I got the execution barrier, I was like, man, once I find a tournament, I'm gonna destroy niggas. So here, okay, and that's and that's great. I'm glad you brought that up. Which brings me to a point that we didn't discuss here, but can you imagine how many times you got beat by like a lot of older players just because you lacked the understanding of how to do your moves? Yes. So when 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 you learn how to fucking do the moves, yeah. you're already better than them because you you've researched and seen yeah. everything that they've done. Bro, I so so that's that's one of my that's my gift in fighting games. My my gift is and I guess it comes with just everything like as far as education yeah, yeah. and my learning process. Mm-hmm. I learn from watching. Sure. I can I can see something one time mm-hmm. and I download it immediately. Mm-hmm. So for those years, two years going to the arcade, I wasn't necessarily good because I couldn't execute. Right. But I saw the strategies. Yeah. I saw what to do. Fireball, right. fireball, dragon punch. Yep. You know, when they jump. Yep. Um tick throws and all mm-hmm. that. I saw it. Yeah. But once I once I had the execution. Mm-hmm. I already had the knowledge from just just from observing. Yep. And I'm I'm always been humble about somebody teaching me something. Word. You know what I mean? Yep. Like like somebody teaching me something on the game yep. or showing me this mm-hmm. because I'm the type of guy I always ask questions. I got you. What's this? Yep. How do you do that? Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. What's that combo you hitting? Absolutely. So yeah. Um, Absolutely, man. Years. Mm-hmm. Years. It took me years, bro. All right, man. So, are you a parent? Yes. You got kids. Yes. How many kids you got? I have three. Three kids, man. Three girls. Three girls. Yep. No boys. No boys. I mean, does that. Girls. Yes, sir. No boys. No boys. And I mean. I Man, I want a boy, man. Yeah. I want a boy. (laughs) I mean, are you feel like you willing to 
run that risk because I mean it's Look, that's man, a hell of a risk. I got a plan, man. I got you. <laughs> What's that plan involved? I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna just give me an egg donator, man. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> but no, I was I, I got married, man, when I was young. Okay. Um, like my like my big brother doing the interview. Yeah. Um, I got married when I was young, man. Um, probably 20 years old. Or okay. So. And that was that was a good decision for me. I think personally, great, great. I have no regrets. I understand. People be like, you got you got regrets because I'm divorced now. Got gotcha. you. But people be like, uh, I mean, you could have this, you could have that. Nah. I feel like everything in life, including death, mm-hmm. that's God's plan. There it is. You feel me? Yep. That's how it happened, and um, it happened how it's supposed to happen, and live life with no regrets. There it you is. Feel me? Yep. So I got I got three beautiful girls, ma'am. My oldest turned sixteen. Mm-hmm in a few months awesome man um the middle one she turns 14 in a few months okay and then the baby she turns eight this month okay yep so you got three girls yep you i mean at any point because you just mentioned by your own admission you just said you're divorced yeah we don't have to go into the logistics yeah, and details yeah, 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 yeah. um about that but does the gaming or the streets or anything and we don't have to go into no street talk about yeah, no yeah, shit yeah, you yeah. might have done or anything. But does any anything that you've experienced at this point have a direct connection with why, or 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 or? I would, you know, I think it's a. In my case, I think it's a time thing. Okay. You know, time um, is in like you were too young, or time is in what? I think. When you because, say time, because I got married the same year that Wizards closed. All right, so Wizards. Yeah, yeah. Talk about Wizards. Man, Wizards was like I had been to a lot of a lot of different arcades uh-huh. um in Detroit. Yep. Um Dale's, um fucking Smitty's. Mm-hmm. Um I used to go to the Michigan Fun Center a lot when I moved to the East Side okay. in ninety six. Okay. And when I was at the Michigan Fun Center, uh-huh. some of the old heads used to come up there. Gotcha. Um one of the cats, uh Jay and fucking uh, DeAndre, remember okay. DeAndre? Yep, yep. Um, they used to come up there and be playing Tekken with me, and I used to hear them talk about Wizards. Um, apparently, the the people that went to Wizards were the best people, mm-hmm. and you know they were having a discussion about like, yeah, man, you can't do that at Wizards, yeah, or some 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 at Wizards. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all kind of heard yeah. that I, before. Yeah, <laughs> I was a kid, yeah. you know, I couldn't I couldn't drive in it. I was about fourteen. Gotcha. Yeah. And, um, I used to always want to go up there, sure. but I was new to the east side, mm-hmm. and you know, you didn't have fucking MapQuest yet, right? In the '90s, right? You know, so it was somewhere where I wanted to venture, but I was just too afraid to get lost. Gotcha. You know, and be on, you know, being from a different side of town. I finally made my way up there. I want to say '98. Mm-hmm. That was my first time going up there. Okay. And I had been an established Tekken player. Uh, so just 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a quick little thing. Yeah. So my games growing up mm-hmm. originally were Street Fighter Two. Gotcha. Then it was Mortal Kombat. Two. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then I played all the SNK games. Gotcha. I played I played the Samurai Showdown. Yeah. Um, I played um, World Heroes. I love World Heroes. Love Fatal Fury uh, Two and Fatal Fury Two Special. Okay. Um, wasn't good at Killer Instinct. Okay. Played Primal Rage. Gotcha. Um. The first King of Fighters, uh, King of Fighters 95, 96, X-Men Children of the Atom. Um, every fighting game yeah. we had at Dale. Okay. Like, okay. it was it was legit. You I got feel you. me? Um, Tekken 2 came out. Well, Tekken 1 came out. I didn't play that one. Then Tekken 2 came out. I played that one. Um, I was turned off by Tekken because, you know how you remember back in the day on the on the move list, on the yep. arcade cabinet? Mm-hmm. They show you, like, four moves. Yeah. So being a Street Fighter player, right. I'm like, oh, those are my moves. Right. Yeah. And I never you conceived was, the fact that you might have 50 moves. There's a Bible of moves. Right. Right. Them. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. So my first character was King, yeah. and the, his three or four moves on the front were lame. Mm-hmm. And niggas picking Paul, doing Phoenix Smasher, yep. taking Half Life on Tekken mm-hmm. Two. And I'm like, man, this shit trash, man. Cut this shit off. <laughs> so the Alpha okay. had came out around the time, so I started getting into Alpha yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. But when Tekken Three came out. Mm-hmm. I was in about eighth grade, and I had I was still buying the um, the Game Pro Fighters Edge magazines. I gotcha. still I, I was I was I was into when I say I was into gaming. Yeah. All the magazines. Yeah. I was it, it was like a religion for me. Yep. So 
Did you have a favorite uh, brand of magazine? Game Pro. Gotcha. Game Pro. That was gotcha. my shit. Uh, yeah. It was Game Pro, and then after Game Pro was Tips and Tricks. Gotcha, man. Tips Did you ever like EGM? Uh, like trying to game they were they were cool too. Gotcha. Yeah, EGM. Gotcha. Yeah, EGM was cool too. Okay. EGM was cool. Now, yeah. I, I, now I remember. Yeah. It was some. There were some other magazines too, yeah. but I remember it was a Fighters Pro, mm-hmm. uh, Fighting Fighting's Edge, uh-huh. Fighting Edge or Fighting Edge yep. Pro, something like yep. that. They had an edition in March. 97 Mm -hmm. and it was like this big explosion of fighting games that year Mm -hmm. you had street fighter 3 yep you had um tekken 3 yep you had street fighter ex Mm -hmm. you had um i want to say vampire savior was on the verge of coming out yep you had marvel superheroes versus street fighter yeah that was you had you had you had like yeah multiple right big fucking games coming out you had um Soul's Edge was still out. Soul Calibur wasn't out yet. Um, but when you go to the arcade, it was just all these these top-notch games. Just mm-hmm. And you had Mortal Kombat 4. Gotcha. Um, yep. During that era, I had... Because in 96, mm-hmm. I kind of got away from gaming. Like gotcha. I, I was I was hardcore from, let's just say, 91 to 95. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat came out 3. And then I stopped playing games because I didn't I didn't like Ultimate Three. Gotcha. From Ultimate Three until ninety seven, it mm-hmm. was a big ass gap where I really didn't play. Gotcha. I used to just be on be in the hood, mm-hmm. you know, yep. go karts yep. and yep. Yep. you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. doing just being a kid. Yep. Once ninety seven came and I, and well ninety six I moved to the east side. Mm-hmm. Ninety seven is when we had that explosion of games. Mm-hmm. So I started playing again. I see. And then X Men versus Street Fighter was still out. Yep, yep. That was that. That's what brought me back to the arcade. That's when I made video. Gotcha. Um, I was like thirteen when I made. Gotcha. Thing. Um, and so I'm I'm, I'm hearing about Wizards. I'm mm-hmm. hearing about Wizards. Now I'm kicking these niggas ass. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. like they come up there, like the the Michigan Fun Center. That was my fucking domain. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't come up there, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? When it came to that that Tekken machine, that was that was my that was my shit. Mm-hmm. I learned Tekken. It took me a minute. I used mm-hmm. to skip school. Gotcha. I used to skip school a lot. Mm-hmm. Eighth grade. Yeah. Ninety seven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got I had a I had a I had a I in the first two years of middle school I was terrible. I gotcha. Two point. 1.5 okay, you know okay. I barely went to school yeah change change schools change neighborhoods I started going to school on the east side I did a lot better 3.3.5 3.6 um and I got tired of going to school so I just started skipping it was mm-hmm. the end of the year they had the explosion of fighting games yep so that was your escape bro I used to shit I used to escape school mm. <laughs> I used to get on the fucking bus yeah the eight mile bus uh-huh and I would go to malls. Okay. Fairlane Mall, King so, Cade, uh-huh. uh, Livonia Mall, Time Zone. Okay. Um, whatever malls oh, had oh, arcades. Yeah. You talking history, man? Yeah. 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 They, okay. Whoever whoever had an arcade, man, I would go and, I, and they let me in. Uh, my it was, it was a buddy of mine I met in '97. His name is Ben. Okay. Ben saw me playing Tekken one day. We were hanging out at Babbage's. Yeah. And I was at King Cade. And he was like, yeah, man, you want to learn how to play Tekken? I seen you trying to play. And I was like, yeah, man, teach me. Because I was reading the strategy guy. Mm-hmm. And he took me down there, and he was teaching me how to play with Paul. Gotcha. So once he taught me how to play Paul, and I got my own legs, mm-hmm. and I started yep. playing on my own and shit, that's when I had was, was becoming, I was up and coming. And I, I became like a, like a little local guy. Yeah, for sure. So some of the guys from the west side mm-hmm. remember me from being little. Mm-hmm. So they were they were coming up to the to the Michigan Fun Center, okay. and they were like, "Damn, man, you you go here." You know, I had you know I was older, mm-hmm. you know, at that point. You talking about from nine and ten right. to fifteen? Now. Exactly. So they remember me from back then. Yeah. And I was annihilating these niggas. You know, they <laughs> like, man. So by the time I start going to Wizards, you know, this was a couple of years of playing Tekken Three, mm-hmm. and I remember Video from ninety six ninety seven. Right. So that's when I ran to this nigga. I was playing X Men versus Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. He was playing Tekken, and he was he beat everybody away. He saw me playing X Men versus Street Fighter. He comes to play me. I'm like nigga, I'm about to beat this nigga's ass. Mm-hmm. I, I see what he was doing over in Tekken. I'm mm-hmm. about to destroy this nigga. So, long story short, this nigga fucking destroyed me. <laughs> 
because I didn't even know what an air combo was. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Right. I was playing X-Men versus Street Fighter like regular Street Fighter. I got you. I was a Street Fighter player. Yeah, Low yeah, medium, yeah. kick, fireball. Right, right. You know, mm-hmm. like I was trying to play it like Alpha. Yeah. And this nigga comes in with Cami and Rogue, mm-hmm. air comboing me everywhere right. across the fucking screen. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Like, I'm like, bro, what is this? Yeah, bro? man. So I went to Wizards hoping mm-hmm. that he would be there. Mm. So this was in 98. This was, this was like a year and a half later. I'm school shopping at, at Eastland with my uncle, and we're coming back, and I finally see, I see the little pink on it. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, let's, I'm like, let's stop here, let's stop here. Mm-hmm. We stopped, and as soon as I came in, there was a crowd on the Tekken 3 machine, and um, uh, VDO was there. Mm. He was there. Got on the machine, beat him, Beat a couple of more other dudes. I'm I'm spanking these niggas. Mm. Um, I had a I had a nice like little five or six street. Earl was there. Mm-hmm. Remember Earl? Yep. Uh, and then video got back on and he beat the shit out of me. Mm. So we were one and one. My uncle was waiting on me and uh, I didn't want to you know I I didn't want to be disrespectful. My uncle was probably. 34 or something right, at the right, time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, man, I ain't about to disrespect this, this this grown ass man by having him wait up here for me. But I talk with Juan. Um, that's this, you know, I met him before, yeah, but this yeah. is the first time we're actually speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's like, yeah, man. I was playing with Zalu at that time. He's like, yeah, man, Zalu's real good, man. I only know uh, another Zalu player, and I think he was talking about the bus driver, as I called him. Mm. The bus driver was a literal. DDOT uh-huh. bus driver uh-huh. that played Tekken at the Fun Center. Damn. And he was real good with Zalu. Um, and this nigga used to beat me so bad mm-hmm. that I learned Zalu. To not not really to play her, but mm-hmm. just to know what the fuck I'm fighting against. And I ended up picking up the character and liking her. And oddly enough, that's how I became, you know, I got my, my little fame from playing his character pretty pretty much. Uh, but I just got way better with her. Nice. Than, than he was. Um, so how does um, if we can? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say after that year, uh huh. I became a full time resident of Wizards. Word. My mom moved uh, down the street from Wizards, uh-huh. and um, I was there all the time. That's, that's when dope. I became. That's when I became a full time resident. So ninety nine uh, until close, I was there. Um, made some lifelong friends. Legendary. Just just. Just all the memories, man. Yep. It was like Wizards was like, it was like that dungeon. If you play RPG games, mm-hmm. it's like that dungeon you go to, where all the fucking regular enemies are so strong that you don't know if you can live. When yep. you, that's how Wizards was. Like, if you were a, a average player mm-hmm. and you go up there, mm-hmm. you you might not get no wins and nothing. I got you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, true, yeah. like, like that's Hell how it yeah. was. Like in in all games, yeah. like niggas would niggas would bully you up out of there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the vibe that you got. And uh, you know, they, it helped me make the player uh, that I became to be. So, um, my one of my favorite places. That that's just you know some of my all time favorite memories. You know, being up in Wizards. Uh-huh. Um, you know, playing. Um, that's where I played my first tournaments. Um, just a great place, man. Excellent, man. All right, so I'm going to transition. Yeah. All right, so talk to me about what does corn stand for? Because a lot of people, uh-huh. yeah, a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. All right, so talk to me about what corn is. So corn is... It's a, it's a it's a it's different groups of dudes that okay. was in Detroit uh-huh. that were playing games. Gotcha. And um, I had a my my original group of dudes mm-hmm. were dudes that I knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my best friends at the time, me, um, Ian Womack, mm-hmm. aka Lowdown motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, my guy Manuel Hollis, rest in peace. Yeah, rest uh, in peace. Aka the best. Best. Yep. Um, and then our newcomer, yep. uh, Antoine Ortiz, as y'all know him, y'all may know him as Alucard. Yep. Um, we had a, f- like a, like a four man gang. And mm-hmm. then we had, you know, also my boy, Al, Al mm-hmm. Wright. Yep. Um, Al you know, good people. yeah, yeah. We had like a four or five man gang yep. and we used to have a term that we used to use at Wizards when we used to go 
and beat niggas' ass. We used to mm-hmm. call it bum bashing. Bum bashing, yep. So when you, when you when you go up to like an arcade or anywhere and it's guys that ain't ain't that good uh-huh. and you just want to have fun, that's what yep. we call it. We call it bum bashing. Bum bashing. So that's what we called our clique, right? Okay. So we did. We was we were we were doing that for you know all those years, two thousand uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. Twine went solo with the Street Fighter Four. Yeah, you know, um, which is what I wanted him to do originally. Gotcha. Anyway, gotcha. Um, I had been away for a couple of years mm-hmm. and. Um, there had there had been like some other teams and cliques or whatever yeah. uh, that came up, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't really like how they were moving. I got gotcha. you. So the guys from the east side they had a team, uh, Daniel Streety and them. They had a team of young guys. Mm-hmm. And they called themselves A Tech, gotcha, or something like that. And mm-hmm. it was Daniel and um, Big Mike, mm-hmm. uh, Curtis. It was a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Mello. And my team pretty much had disbanded. So everybody had gone their own way. Mm-hmm. Twan was with uh, Digital Battlegrounds or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And since I was out the picture for two years, you know, everybody kind of got displaced. Mm-hmm. So Corn stands for the, the Coalition of Real Niggas. Okay. Cause that's where I, that's what I was feeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. I felt like the guys, um, and I ain't trying to throw no shade, nah, yeah. but the, but the yeah. orgs that was so-called running things in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, I think TFA yeah. was the was the main I one. Gotcha. Uh, TFA was led by um, uh, Shelton. Yep. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I felt like I felt like, and I got an invite to be on TFA, and I I, I turned it down. I didn't I didn't I didn't want to be on TFA, and the main reason I didn't want to be on TFA. All right. So. Coalition. The Coalition of Real Niggas. All right. And again, like I said, we were different factions, groups of uh, cliques of people, and we just merged into one. Okay. So um, it was always my wish to, it was always my dream to have young black men, you know, that look like myself. You ain't got to even be black. But right. I always wanted you know, a whole, just a whole field of us. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, so is that, I mean, how, 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 how does the design, cause there's corn. I yeah. mean, like, like how, how does that even, cause even, 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 and I don't even know if I'm reading in too deep of it, yeah. but when you say a whole field, I'm yeah. thinking like corn field. Is yeah. that, is that a thing? That's what, I mean, that's what we, we refer to it as metaphorically sometimes. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like we didn't even call ourselves corn in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Somebody else did. Okay. I just really, I really said the name out loud, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the whole thing. And with somebody, we was at Yumacon, and they was like, oh, corn. And I was like, oh, yeah, corn, yeah. You feel me? But even think about, like, when you just said a whole field, it's like corn field and, yeah, I don't know, that, bro, was that later. shit is deep, though. That was later. It's actually yeah. really deep. Yeah, that was later, man. And, uh, you know, like, because... You know, I watched the whole arcade scene from the from the birth. I watched it in 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 all the timelines. Mm-hmm. I remember when it was popping right. in the early '90s. I remember when it dwindled down in the mid '90s. I remember at the end of the 2000s where you had to be a hardcore player to be there. I remember the death of the arcades in the beginning of the mm-hmm. of the 2000s. So you so experienced it all. Literally. I experienced it the whole mm-hmm. the whole cycle. So I I remember it being a thing that young niggas did. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. We 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 did that shit to to not be in the streets. Right. You feel me? We mm-hmm. that was that was an escape for us. Right. You know, from the ongoing fucking drug wars yep. and violence and carjackings and murders and shit. It was in the city. That was our our place of refuge. You feel okay. me? Okay. Yep. So like, I wanted that again, but it just wasn't. It, there was no interest from it from people that was my age and younger. Gotcha. So. When I started corn, it was to kind of replicate what we what we had. Okay, you feel me? Yeah. And I used to be very strict about the people that I let into my clique. Like, in order to be with us back in the day, you can you can you can verify with Twine. Mm-hmm. You had to be 
an exceptional talent, I feel. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You couldn't be, oh, I'm a Street Fighter player. Right. Or I'm a Marvel player. Mm -hmm. Or I play Tekken. For sure. You had to be the nigga that can play everything. I gotcha. You had to you had to be a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was more of a quality over quantity thing. I gotcha. With with corn, I flipped the script. Okay. So I made it so you don't have to be, you know, super talented, super exceptional at this. You 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 know because everybody don't have that type of skill. Gotcha. So I felt like everybody, instead of four people trying to be everything, mm -hmm. you have different different moving parts. And they just move an entire machine. How how I mean so how and not a full chronological breakdown, but how how did you go about recruiting people to join? Like it, what was the typical in the, in conversation? The, in, the, in, the, like? in the beginning, bro, mm -hmm. it wasn't even a recruiting process. I got we you. just I just picked niggas. Pick niggas and it was just yeah, if everybody down. was in the right place at the right time, yeah. you got in. I got you. That's how I eventually went. We did that for I don't say about five months. I got you. And then we had something. I just wasn't feeling how everything was going. Group was big as hell at in, one point. In the, in, the, in, the, in the very beginning, there had to be about thirty of us. Yeah, y'all was deep. Because, like I said, yeah, it was like a merger. Right, right. It's like a like a corporate merger yeah, for sure. Once, because that was in October 11, 2011. Once April came, I had got fed up. Mm. A lot of the niggas, you know, if, that's what happens when you absorb so many people. You got conflicting mindsets. I understand. You got people that I, I'm telling people to come over here and train on right, this day. Right, right, right. You know, I'm handing out $10 bills to mm -hmm. niggas for gas yeah, to yeah. come all the way from the east side. Yeah. You know, people come over just because I'm giving them 10. Right, right. But don't fuck with me any other time. I see. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, it, yep. it was getting weird. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't feeling it. So I did a, I did a destroy and rebuild. Was the training camp... Um would you say it was similar to like uh what was that team that was out in New York? Empire. Empire? Would you say it was I mean something similar like that? Is probably were, probably not as is not as intricate. Okay. Um because I was used to dealing with just four to five of us. Understood. And we played, you know, hella first to tens and multiple games and yeah. we would sit down and practice, but it was it probably wasn't as complex as what Triforce was doing gotcha. at that point in the beginning at gotcha. least. Um, but I would say that because the way Empire did things, Empire Empire was, was really like into the developmental thing. Okay. Um, so I guess we were we were kind of doing the same thing just 10 years later. I see. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, compared to, to what they had already been doing since whatever year. Tell um, me. So, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Tell me what you feel like your biggest – uh, the biggest opportunities was that corn uh, might have been missing just as a collective. Um, just, just, I think the only opportunity that we probably didn't take advantage of is I think we grew really big after Yumacon twenty twelve. Okay. Uh, the crying Brian and all that shit. I got you. These we, guys had a couple viral moments. Yeah, we yeah. went r really, really viral. And I don't think at that time we had the money, the technology, I got you. and everything to mm -hmm. really take advantage of all the notoriety yeah. and, and just just press and attention that we were getting at the time. You what know? do you feel like? Um, I ain't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead, bro. Okay, were you, were you, you finish yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. my bad. Because um, I wanted to touch on this while it was on my mind. Yeah. Um, what is like? What are some of your personal? Happiest accomplishments with Corn as a collective. It's Corn as collective. Yep. I feel like, man, because it wasn't it wasn't just about the games with me. You feel me? Like, I was like the type of guy I want to see all my players succeed. Gotcha. And it wasn't I wasn't doing it for the biggest sponsorships or to win all these tournaments or something like that. I feel like these are my these are my click of guys. Um. And whatever we do as a team or whatever whatever we do as, as an individual, um, I'm proud of it. You feel me? Um, just taking so many so many different players, mm -hmm. developing them, watching them become alpha males or or, or you know alpha yeah. females. For sure, yeah. You know, yep. in their own right, in their own game, in their mm -hmm. own lane. Um, 
two two of the the, the Tekken players uh, went on to win the uh, the TWT, I think it was called. Okay. Um, the Tekken event, the teams, oh, yeah. um, Cuddlecore and Brawl Pro, mm -hmm. they were on the same team. Mm -hmm. um, they was they was with Corn originally um, when I when I set out because I retired in Tekken myself in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like the Michigan community really wasn't pushing me, and I felt like I needed to do the the, the manager of the team thing. Gotcha. So I needed to step back from mm -hmm. being you know, a player right. and to really focus on everybody else. Yeah. So I opted out. And what I did was I started recruiting my replacements. So I, I, I went and got a lot of good talent and they, they went out to be top players. What's um, the current status of corn? The current status, man. Um, we ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we still here. Uh, it's kind of like a. It's kind of like our story. Kind of like the No Limit story. Word, word. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We we just we just smaller, um, trying to figure out our place mm -hmm. in the new community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of rules. Yep, yep. You know, so I think the biggest the biggest shortcoming that we had was like I said the monetary monetary thing. Gotcha. We're paying for a lot of things on our own. Gotcha. A lot of stuff out of out of my own pocket. Yeah. Um, and I always say it when I come back to the community, if I came back that whatever I do, I'm not gonna do it the same way. I have to learn from the mistakes from the past. And um, I don't think, because people were asking me the other day, oh, well, well, you know, corn, corn, corn. And we'll never have 30 people again. Gotcha. You know, we went from 30 to eight. That was in the same five months. Mm. So like I said, it was, it was about 30 of us. And then I cut I cut my ties with most of the players. I got you. Um, once we were eight, I felt like it was it was quality over quantity again. Good. You know what I'm saying? Where it started. Yeah, that's that's where I started at originally, and then we we built ourselves from there. So, Let me ask you something because it's in my mind. I, I got I got to touch on this. Yeah. What would you have done differently with the recruiting part? I mean, would you still have affiliated people but yeah. not made them efficient members or what? So. This this originally everybody came right. Gotcha. And then I changed. So after April, because you have to imagine, I kicked out niggas that were my friends. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. There are people in the Michigan community that still don't really like me mm. to this day because I kicked everybody out. I got gotcha. you. You know, some of the people I kicked out were my friends. wasn't nothing personal. Mm -hmm. I just felt like we weren't on the same page. Gotcha. So. Eventually, what I did was I said, who's traveling, who's practicing, who shows promise, who listens, who's hungry, who has drive, mm -hmm. you know, and who's who's capable of actually learning and picking up. And um, those were some of the things, you know, that I would that I would look at. Some people I was recruiting a lot of people I was recruiting them. They didn't know it. I don't talk about it. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't tell them. Hey, mm -hmm. if you keep you keep it up, no. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just. I would just watch. Just watch and not say yeah, anything. Yeah, silent. So you'd know that their improvements and their work ethic wasn't based on wanting to just be down with Correct. the team. That's, Correct. That's, that's yeah. That's an OG yeah. street mentality. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to do yeah. it. That's because, awesome. Yeah, because like, I gotta. I gotta see how you move on your own. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and see like if 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 you can join my 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 conglomerate right, so to speak right, and, yep. and add value to us you know what i mean got a question for you um mm -hmm. a lot of these aren't on here obviously yeah, because this yeah, is yeah. a this is an important topic man in uh detroit's history yeah. this is this is probably the most uh, this is the mo most renowned click probably in the midwest yeah to be honest with you yeah um certainly the most controversial yeah for whatever reasons but when you think about when we talk about controversial uh, things and topics and names, obviously we got a lot of different shit going on politically. The name niggas being in the title. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there is there any way you can work that around where a company, let's say Amazon, I'm just throwing a name out there. Mm -hmm. Say Amazon comes to you and say, hey, I love your fucking idea, Jeff Bezos. He comes down to the D. He's like, what up? Where's BJ at? Yeah. He loves the fucking idea of you know what I'm saying? What you're doing and everything like that. And he wants to sign the team. Um, but obviously he's like, hey, you know, I can't 
It's a yeah. PR nightmare. Yeah. I mean, I know you've had that thought before. So I already came, you know, what it what it what it was is I felt like um because the word nigga in the name mm -hmm. was controversy. Gotcha. Some people had an issue with it or whatnot. Mm -hmm. What I did was I just created a um a separate entity. Okay. So as a click, we were corn, mm -hmm. but on some esports business shit like that, we were IRL. Mm -hmm. So IRL is is LLC, and mm -hmm. um, congratulations. Yeah, we we did that a long time ago. Word. So, and it's funny because I'd be looking at at shit. I'd be looking at Twitch, and I'd be looking at people in the in the community and stuff. And Twitch has a uh, they have a topic on Twitch called IRL, meaning, wow. meaning that if you ain't talking about gaming. Mm -hmm. It's like a just chat type of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my shit. Mm. You feel me? The whole presence of anything with, what, the, with what those does three IRL letters stand for? in real life. In real life. Okay. Yeah. So, so anything with that, mm -hmm. that's something that I, they, 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 they Took that. That's some. That was a, a term that I coined, mm. and I had to. I had. To, we, we are already have all the paperwork and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the name that I felt like. If a, if a serious sponsor, right? Okay. Or anything like 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 that. That's the that's the name that I'm doing business under. And do you feel like uh, IRL carries the same core values as the coalition? Coalition. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. It was the same thing. I just okay. felt like. I felt like. Um, because I've been, you know, I've been doing the gaming thing most of my life. And at that point, I didn't know if there was, you know, me and Gym Master, um, we always had dreams of mm. what it would be like one day. You know, we thought we'd be wearing NASCAR, you know, full driving suits with Pepsi. And, yep. you know, we mm -hmm. were thinking about stuff like that 20 mm -hmm. years ago. Yep. And um, we didn't know exactly how it was right. going to be, but... I felt like at that point when the whole IRL thing started, I didn't know how big gaming would be. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I felt like you could be moderately successful, you know, with the winnings and stuff like that. But I felt like it's, it's always important to focus on your life outside of games and to do your gaming as like more so of a hobby. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can, if you can monetize it. All right. If you can be successful for it, mm -hmm. go for it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But I feel like whatever you do outside, whether it's working, running a business, mm -hmm. going to school, yep. uh, things like that, those are the things that you should that you should focus on. Um, instead of sacrificing everything and potentially coming you know up with nothing. You know what's funny? And you probably can you can probably agree to this. Mm -hmm. Remember, two thousand nine. 2010, mm -hmm. 2011. Back then when y'all used to play y'all sets on YouTube mm -hmm. and y'all were doing the YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all were killing it with the views. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Detroit literally was... But but remember, people mm -hmm. used to clown that. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. They used to say, well, you can't do that offline. Right. You can't go beat so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, you not gonna place here. Mm -hmm. Isn't it odd and ironic that that's now the focus right of every top player now yeah, yeah. every top player now because i've been telling them this for years like you know ain't no money ever gonna come from this mm -hmm. now everybody wants to be what y'all were exactly 10 plus 10 years plus ago years now y'all want to now y'all want to be content creators mm-hmm before y'all clown the content creators, yep. y'all were they, they very, I mean, what's the word they call it? Toxic. Exactly. They were toxic. Yeah. <laughs> towards the, I mean, am, am I wrong? No, you're right. <laughs> towards the content creators. Yeah, this is true. This you is just true. a YouTube nigga. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's what you would hear. <laughs> exactly. Now, everybody wants to be that YouTube nigga. Yep. That's true. You, you feel me? No, like, that's 100%. I mean, can't agree with you can't disagree with the truth yeah um, it, uh, but you, you brought up a, a talking point man I want to ask this uh, last question and uh, closing um, got a lot more content I couldn't get out with you but this one thing I want to um, I just want to change tempo up a little bit yeah you know we've been knowing yourself for a long time dog. 20 years 20 years 
Um, but people are going to research you. My yeah. channel isn't booming right now, but yeah. this is the start of many type of things yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is for the for the books, man. So in case I in case I get into a car accident, yep, you know exactly, anything, man. You know? So if a person if a person sees like your Facebook, mm-hmm. I've seen it all the time. I see it all the time. Wow, because we're friends on there. Yeah. We've been friends for a long time. In my opinion, like I know you, so I understand the context of like ninety eight percent of. There might be like 2% of shit I'm like, oh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But like 98% of the stuff that you see, I understand the context and where you're coming from because I know you. Yeah. But people will see you and they will think, this nigga is just rude. I mean, who are you? I mean, is that who you are online? Because in the beginning of the interview, people will see this. Mm-hmm. They won't, may not see it in this clip, but they watch the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you told us that you learned from the streets early growing up where you was from that you, you kind of have to mold yourself. And even Antoine, we were talking to off camera, yeah. he said the same thing. Yeah. Camera's in front of him, he's got to be pencil toe. And, yeah. and when the camera's not off, he can be relaxed, right? Yeah. When people see you, man, like the person that they're meeting, that they're sending a friend request to, and, and they're offended by the things that you're saying, is that who you are? I would say... If I typed it online, mm-hmm. that's really what I thought for okay. the most part. Yeah. Um, the difference is between online and in person, mm-hmm. when you see people, mm-hmm. how you doing? Yep. You have a conversation with them. Mm-hmm. You may bring up a topic that, that y'all talking about. Yep. You know, you, you try to agree to disagree. Or right. some people just get into full-blown arguments. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But the online mm-hmm. um, interactions are usually different because online – Let's say I make a status about X, Y, and Z. Right. right? I thought about it when I woke up. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. It came straight from my brain. Yep. You don't have interactions with people like that. Just like me and you sitting here. Yep. I wouldn't be thinking about what the president doing. Exactly. Or what the news is doing. So it's right. it's it's coming it's coming straight from my right, right. from my frontal lobe or mm-hmm. whatever you call it, right? Um, but I feel like I feel man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I hate social media. <laughs> I, I've heard that from you before. I hate social media. Do you hate, hate that it's a necessity? I hate everything about it, bro. I got I you. hate that because some people get online and they're fake. Most yep. people get online and they're fake. This is true. I call I call social media the matrix. This is true, because man. Because you have your you have who you really are, mm-hmm. and then you have your online like yep. looking glass self. Yeah, man. That's and people, true. And people reflect usually who they're not online right through their social media yep. mm-hmm. and that's why a lot of people like my social media posts because they have to put up a front yep and i just don't give a fuck exactly i have no filter i say what i want that's that's the point that's the point i wanted to yeah. really tie into man yeah yeah because I, I bro you can't bro you can look at any mass mm-hmm train of thought or yep. opinion on anything. Mm-hmm. All one person has to do is post a meme yep. or a status mm-hmm. and they screen capture it, they mm-hmm. repost it. It'll be just something that one person thought. One, it doesn't necessarily have to be famous. Right. And people will flock to whatever that idea or that sentiment is. Mm-hmm. That's like I've seen some shit about people uh, eating rare meat. Mm. Black people have eaten our meat well done since the beginning of fucking time. Right. It's just a thing that we always did. Mm-hmm. We associated eating red meat with white people. Right. Now, in 2020, niggas post memes about, oh, y'all niggas eat y'all meat well done. Yeah. Nigga, we all did. Yeah, I, I personally, since we're talking about it, I can't stomach eating um, steak if it's like red and shit. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. And that's why I don't eat steak. Yeah. Because I can't, I yeah. also can't handle eating it tough. Yeah. But yeah. But it's it's just it's just weird to me. It's just weird how people we have this hive like drone yep. droneish mindset when it comes to social media, mm-hmm. and I just I hate it, bro. So I got you. I just act the ass. It's it's um. I mean, I I say what what I, I say what I think. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. And if if somebody don't like it, if, if I feel like this, it's only the internet. Mm-hmm. Y'all niggas be fake online, yep. and people love you for it. Mm-hmm. And I just have a blast, right? And you can hate me for it. Yep. You can you can if you want to, yep. but I feel like if I, anything I say online, especially if we know each other, right? I feel like anything I say online, yeah, 
Because I'm having fun for the yeah, most part. exactly. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I offend you with something I say and you don't like me as a person, as mm-hmm. a human, as a family member, because I have family members that come at me too. Mm. And, well, fuck you then. Right. In that's real a, life. Yeah, in real life. <laughs> IRL. If that's if that's how you feel, if something I said yeah. on the internet offended you that much, because this shit is this shit is it's it's, it's a facade to me. It's fake. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's the Matrix. Yep. Niggas be on there. I love my wife. Posting with their wife. Love of my life. Mm-hmm. Nigga fucking twenty bitches in real right. life. Right. <laughs> right. Nigga on there posting. Yeah. Posting up. Going live. Playing with their kids. That's the only time they see their kids. They right, hate. man. You feel oh me? Oh my god. It's yeah. It's all fake. Yeah, it's bro. all a facade. It's yeah. all bullshit. Mm-hmm. So my thing is have fun. This is true, man. That's 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 my ideology on yeah. social media. Um, I don't get on there to say nothing. I mean, even, even if sometimes I do say some real shit, yeah. some deep shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Sometimes yeah. I get on there, mm-hmm. but social media is for memes, bro. Right, right, right. It's for memes. It's to, it's to have fun. If I get online and I'm not laughing at something I see on my phone, then what the fuck what am the I fuck here for? What the fuck am I here for? Yeah, I got you. So, so all those people that get offended with, with shit I say, and y'all think I'm a, a racist and a bigot and all that shit, I mean, I did my job. Absolutely. <laughs> In closing, brother, what can we expect from you, man? Real short. Uh, I'm back playing fighting games a little bit, man. Okay. You were in Cali. We're not going to talk much about that. I yeah. want to cover that last time, next time. But yeah, yeah. You, you back in Michigan now. Back in Michigan, Okay. Man. So you back um, into playing games. I play. I'm, I'm trying to play Tekken a little bit. Where can we find you? What, what's, the, uh, what's, the, what's the tags in the, in, the, in, the, in the accounts where we can find you on if a person want to? Yeah, some games my uh, Facebook is 80 Tensei, A D O. Uh, last name Tensei. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter as I think my Twitter handle is Cornadonis at Cornadonis. Um, my Twitch is Adonis Ali, I okay. believe. I haven't streamed in God lo- knows how long, or probably a year. Uh, but I'm, what's I'm, your what's your most active gamer tag? And then we got to wrap it. Uh, I'm on S- Steam as ATG313, and I'm on Xbox as BAJ313. Awesome man. Yep. Cool, bro. Yeah, man. Cool, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. I know, man. We was going to be about five, six hours.